Okay, so here's a 90 minute 10 second game. Just getting in practice for the OTB tournament in September. And then off of the back of the only capture when it's absolutely necessary mini series that we've just done. I'm looking to see whether or not we can kind of implement that in the longer play game. So we play as white here. So we will be playing another one today. Going to kind of sort of replicate um, the feeling of the Congress because one will be in the after morning, one will be in the afternoon. I'm taking a bye in the first game, so I'm just treating this as my bye game uh, in a sense. So just getting a bit of practice there and then we'll do two games in one day and then two games in the next day. And they're long play games, so hopefully fingers crossed we can try and find some ample um, opportunities to showcase to ourselves the skills that we've been working on and then hopefully take it to the over the board <laughs> uh, scenario so we opened with e4 nice and steady and the opponent came through with c6 and we're developing the knight nice and steady so what we learned from the exercise of only capturing when absolutely necessary was the fact of we continue doing our normal opening and we'll capture where we know it's appropriate to capture. We're not just going to give away pieces just to give away pieces to try and satisfy the concept of only capture when it's absolutely necessary. So in this particular scenario here, it's pretty straightforward that we're capturing in the center and then we're blocking with the pawn here. That's what we're used to. You don't have to do it that way, but this is what we're used to doing. So they develop the knight and we bring the bishop through, pinning through to the king as usual. Uh, pretty nice pretty bit of opening there. Gets our bishop out so we can potentially go and castle for king safety. All pretty straightforward stuff. So we castle. So at this moment in time, we're noticing the opponent hasn't castled and they haven't really developed many of their pieces. They've got the same amount of pieces as us, but their king side area is kind of jammed in. So are they contemplating castling on the queen side? So bring the bishop through, looking to see whether or not we can circumvent any activity going towards the queen side. But got to remember, this bishop wouldn't stop the castling to the queen side because the queen king would be going here so it's not blocking the king's passageway so very mindful of that so then on the other side of the coin for myself it's about making sure my king is not home alone again that's one of the key things that we've learned from our our exercises using the answer process try and make sure your king isn't home alone to try, try and prevent any attacks towards your king area so they bring the king the queen down attacking the bishop Again, I'm thinking, okay, that's a nice loss in tempo in terms of developing um, the minor pieces, but are they genuinely going castling on the queen side? It looks like they potentially are. But then they decide to develop the knight through. They've not castled on the queen side, so then it looks like they're attempting to maybe go on the king's side. It looks a little bit confused. So they brought the knight through, looks like obviously protect protecting the knight here. But in my head, I'm thinking these losses in tempo, surely we can make some um, advantage here. Gauge bar is not showing either, either or, it's basically showing us a draw here. But in terms of position on the board, I'm feeling a little bit more confident that potentially, because the queen is looking to actually grab this pawn, potentially there's maneuvers that we can uh, make in order to try and maybe even trap the queen because that's happened to me before where I've gone greedy munching taking the pawn here and then my queen has ended up being trapped just waiting and seeing so we push forward onto the bishop gauge bar doesn't like that move and they capture him so we bring the queen through so we're still not home alone with our king our queen is nicely placed we've got like a two on one situation here if they're thinking of pushing the pawn through He's got a two or more protection at the minute, but there's not much happening with his pieces at the moment. So I'm just really wanting to see what they're wanting to do. It is a long play game, but the moves were being fired out dead quickly. So the time really wasn't um, going down too fast. 
So the Queen actually takes this pawn, takes the pawn like it's a free pawn. Now this really is quite ideal for us, even the gauge bar is actually showing that it's quite ideal for us, but we need to box clever with what we do. So we brought the Bishop back attacking the Queen. In hindsight, probably one of the rooks attacking the queen would have been slightly better. But in any case, my own personal evaluation um, felt quite nice about this particular attacking position because it still does have access towards the attacking the pawn here. Also having access to this square here as well to put, start putting pressure towards the king. So I didn't feel too badly about that position. And I probably would do the same move again um, even though I mean the rook coming across here is nice you know because it keeps the bishop on this diagonal but at the same token it's not stopping the king from castling so it's, it's nice but this felt nicer a smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong in my eyes so the queen moves into this square again looking for this pawn at this point here if you have a look at the queen, the queen is actually protecting the knight at the moment. So if the queen does take the pawn, then our queen can defend if this bishop does a kind of sacrifice type thing, but it is for a better position on the board. Because the real reason we're wanting to actually contemplate that is to either potentially trap the king, um, queen in the longer term because it's still chomping at the bit to get this pawn. So we look now to make sure that it potentially does take the pawn because um, it's free. So it looks like we've made a mistake and they actually take the pawn. So this is the kind of start of the process now in terms of maybe potentially trapping the queen. It wasn't set in stone as yet, but then we took the pawn off the board and sacrificed it for a better position because now our queen is protecting the knight the queen probably may go on greedy munch again and again the queen is far away from his king his king is realistically at home alone because it's not really got any protection on it what is the queen going to do in this situation the rook takes the bishop which is even probably worse maybe because maybe they had tempo to take the pawn here and do some damage so now we bring the rook up which is protecting the pawn but also the queen in its own little self can't really go here because the pawn will take can't go here because the pawn will take it can't really drop down here because the rook will take so it has potentially the option of sacrificing itself now when I look at this situation I'm saying to myself well are you winning the queen realistically? I mean, we're taking and his rook takes. Um, is that really a good balance? I'm thinking, well, if we get this rook here, then when if, if the queen decides to move, then we're going to get a rook for free. We're going to be in a better position on the board, looking holistically, not just looking at, okay, capturing. Is it absolutely necessary for me to capture? Not really, because it's not going to improve my position in the way that I want it to. He's going to be owning the file with his rook. That's not what we want. We want to take advantage of this home alone king. So we bring the rook across. Gage bar is kind of agreeing with us as well. We're not rushing this. Just because we've got sights of his queen doesn't mean we're going to win the game. Yes, we've brought the rook across and yes, his queen can jump to safety somewhere, you know, going across here. And I did actually guess that they will potentially go here because at least they're protecting the rook and no problems there whatsoever because we're going to be an up, the exchange up and with a nice position on the board and their king hasn't got castled yet and their pieces aren't working together as a team at this moment and we have a lovely pin on their king so there's a lot of ands in there more positives than negatives so they move the queen and as you can see the gauge bar is showing well that's kind of like out and out winning here for white which is us. So we grab keeping it nice and simple and they move their king rather than taking with the knight because the knight can't take because obviously the x-ray is through. So in that sense there we do win a free rook. Obviously we do have momentary checks on here and 
capturing the night is also nice so we captured obviously expecting the, the knight to take back but he takes back with the pawn so he's still probably chomping up the bit to get our knight here and we take this pawn here now we're basically looking to peel off pawns left right and center here and really try and squish the king, king if we can he takes the knight which to me uh, again is leaving the king home alone because then it's like one move away from checkmate so we grab the pawn and at this point the opponent resigned so this really the exercise that we had done with only capture when it's absolutely necessary really did come into this particular game um, I'm really quite pleased that I did that exercise because it was like almost the icing on the cake for the the answer process in terms of taking pieces off the board, removing pieces off the board strategically and within the word strategically that element of only capture when it's absolutely necessary to then utilize all the other concepts within the answer process and that helps with the logical thinking, the creative thinking, all of the other concepts that we've worked with to make the choice a better choice for us. I'm not saying we're going to win all of the games playing like that, it's just it's a different mindset and it does help with the choice of moves that you're making and that's really all I wanted to do, I wanted to try and improve my selection process get rid of devil finger as best possible get rid of the creative brain going in overload and logicalizing the creative aspect um, because the creative aspect is good because it worries about so many things it provides so many solutions um, not solutions it, it provides so many queries and issues that you can make solutions out of quite a lot of them but it's kind of choosing which one is the correct solution and I think bringing in this only capture where it's absolutely necessary helps me to then look at the position that I want to be in after the capture does it improve my position on the board that capture or am I just wasting my time and then getting myself into problems